Hey guys, it's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and we're out here in a section of uh, my permaculture ranch, and I want to talk to you today about improving your soil. What we have in front of you is some essential micronutrient number one, EM1. You can find this in our store. Um, I have about 40 pounds of volcanic rock dust right here. Um, and I've made a spreader for it. It's just some holes in a uh, container that I reused, kind of like confectioner's sugar. You can see it coming out there. And I have some mixed EM1 that I'm making. So I've made 10 gallons of this stuff with just using this much so far. And now it's fermenting in here, and so I can just take this and make more of this the same way and perpetually, continuously make it forever. When you're making it every day, you should hear this, a little fart in your <laughs> container, and that shows that the essential micronutrients are growing inside here and are gonna improve your soil. Now, these are the most two important ways to improve your soil. Essential micronutrients is a microbial inoculant, basically helps the soil kickstart, um, all the activity that's uh, necessary and important um, for making your soils awesome. The rock dust is the micronutrients. Let's talk about rock dust. Rock dust is important for all organic and permaculture applications because soils are typically devoid of the micronutrients plants need. And this rock dust provides all the micronutrients for your plants. Now, it's not necessarily a good thing all the time. If you don't have the right micronutrients, um, and you just add rock dust, you could potentially be pulling away from your soils. That's why it's important to get mycorrhiza and other fungus kick-started with the EM1 before you add rock dust. Rock dust should only be added to soils uh, that are currently have amazing uh, micro microbes and fungus. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Um, I've been developing these soils over here on this terrace for uh, three or four years now. Um, they're kind of dark underneath. They have lots of organic material. And so this is the type of soil you would be ready to add rock dust to. First thing I'm going to do, and see we have a nice squash here kicking out, is add rock dust um, to the soil. Then I'm going to add some more EM1. And the way I do that is pretty simple. I'm just going to mix it mix the EM1 with some water. So I just take it, some of my EM1 that I'm making and I just add it to right there. It's kind of like sweet and delicious. Just add it to a watering can and apply it. It's that simple. Now I'm going to apply this generously everywhere to the soil and then I'm going to water it in. What this is going to do is it's going to be adding the essential micronutrients and microbes uh, to a soil that I've been developing for several years and I should get excellent results. I'm pretty excited to see what kind of results we get. And so that's as simple as putting, in, putting on the EM1 is. We'll do a little experiment with that shrinking, that baby squash. See how the EM1 does. Now as far as the rock dust goes, all you gotta do with the rock dust is make your own shaker and come and add it to the soil. You do not want it to add it to brand new soils. Rock dust should only be added to already established soils that have good mycorrhiza. And you can put as much or as little as you want. So, and then water that in so that the micronutrient gets into the soil available for the microbes and the mycorrhiza to break it apart and send it to the plants. So guys, if you're not aware, the food you eat that you buy in stores is really devoid of nutrition. The soils we've been growing in for decades um, get more and more depleted. That's why it's essential to be growing your own food. The right way. Ooh. 
they are hidden everywhere under the thorns. Look at the gooseberries. Chanel's berries. So the problem with monoculture and the depletion of our soil. Listen to all the bees. Our honeybees love the whorehound. The apricot. We've got uh, some onions going to seed here. It's going to be millions of seeds shortly. Potatoes look amazing. Jerusalem artichokes. Peruvian blue potato. There's a huge spinach going to seed. We have lots of spinach going to seed here, so I'm going to have endless spinach in this orchard propagating itself everywhere. Look at the size of this, these spinaches here. These are all seeds. And then this is all giant yellow mustard seed. More yellow mustard seed. Great for the bees. They love it. It's one of my onion beds. Carrots and garlic. This garlic is pretty done. This is a small purple variety. And we've got some huge garlics I'll show you in a minute. This is the bed we planted earlier. Lettuces are pretty done. Carrots are coming in. We've been chowing on this kale nonstop and this spinach, which is now going to seed. Show you the progress of... Uh... It's only been four weeks since our last freeze. So the peppers are just coming in. The amaranth is just coming in. That's uh, Matt Powers at Amaranth. We got some nice peas. Some of our squashes are really banging. That's an Alaska pea, I think. There's peas all over the property. It's like a little squash coming up. And then over here on our new uh, food plot, we've got quinoa for the first time ever growing. This is a mountain quinoa. This is green quinoa, some squash, some Navajo bean, some potatoes, and some dent corn, which is looking pretty bleak. Nice little squash pop in there. This is the Navajo pumpkin hill, and it just really started growing, barely. I got some uh, climbing beans here, Kentucky Wonder, I believe. A little bit, another, some peas in here. That's an apricot and another spinach going to seed. Really nice Nanking cherry next to this apricot. Looks like a uh, raspberry coming up. Really cool looking lettuce. That's a one first year rhubarb in there. This is a four foot high bee bomb. And let's check the greenhouse out. Holy macaroni. That is some garlic. Oh my goodness. We got about a hundred more like this, and you can too. Here we are, it's super hot in here. I got this big brassica here that's all seed, gone to seed, and the black seeds are in this pod. You can see them right there. And that is a red Russian kale. This is our entry plum. And I've got a, a version of chicory here, going to seed. Um, the tomatoes are looking good. The peppers are massive in here and highly productive. There's hundreds of flowers on these peppers. We got about 10 peppers in here in different places. There's a pepper actually growing right there. Nice purple one. These are mini purples. And then more tomatoes. Need a little water, get a little water in here, but our tomatoes are just turning red. I just harvested some of the first ones this week. You can see here. 
that little patio potato. Uh, the potato, uh, the tomatoes on the left are seed that we keep perpetuating here. Um, but again, it needs a little bit of water in here. So some mint, and what I'm going to be doing in here because it's a little depleted now is uh, adding the essential micronutrients and some other things. Um, oh, there's a nice pepper back there. To improve the soil in here, we got a second rat, uh, strawberry bloom coming in pretty hard. Uh, really nice looking cukes back there and prolific tomatoes. So, looking pretty warm in here. You can hear our air conditioner working. There's cold air blowing out of these. All run on a 25 watt solar panel and heating the ground here making it cool and storing some of that humidity. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Thai basil, peppers, can be yours if you grow it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, share this with like-minded people. Be safe. Look at that.